All right, and the connection link is now established, and we are transmitting through the channel to all of you, and it is our pleasure, our excitement, our passion to be able for this link to be established amongst each of us. We would like to begin this conversation with the following idea, and that is this. Remember that you are dreaming while you are awake. This is a powerful teaching you can utilize in your own physical lives to understand the paradoxical nature of your reality experience. Because understand, when you embrace the idea of paradox within your reality, it allows for you to go into a state that has been coined by many names across different cultures throughout your histories. But understand, it brings you into a state of non-separation, non-duality, allowing for you to see more of the wholeness that exists within your realm. And when you embrace this state, you are able to become more of yourself. You can bring more of your energies through. And the idea is, while you are walking around throughout your life, understanding that you are still in a dream, and at first, this will create a certain layer, a certain filter, a certain vibration projected around you. And this will, just like when you're dreaming, deepen in its ability for it to become lucid. In other words, you can wake up more deeply in the dream. And you will find that as you apply this filter of, oh, I'm dreaming, you can then begin to play around with the idea of, wait a minute, I can do whatever I want. And in addition to that, every person I experience is being projected from my own consciousness. You can then take that a step further, looking into your dreaming self saying, not only is everything a projection of my own consciousness, but everything is also a symbol. It is also a teaching, a message with information relevant for me that I get to interpret it with meanings I may extract and apply in my life in whatever way I choose. And the idea is through realizing you are still dreaming, physical reality will cease to remain as dense as it is for most of you. It will begin to turn into a much more light experience where you can begin to navigate the reality experience much more smoothly. Because when you're dreaming, you have the awareness that everything and anything is possible at all moments. You also know that the dream can cave in on itself and you can actually wake up. This, in terms of its application into your conscious, physicalized state, is akin to you. In such a way that you actually begin to believe you're dreaming a different dream. Many of you would understand this as the idea of you raising your vibration to such an extent that your experience of earth begins to change. The people in your lives begin to change. And this is akin to waking up in the dream so fully that you almost forget you are in a dream. And what we are doing here is we are reaching deep into your own beings. And we are bringing forth, just through these words, the vibrations, the emanations of you in the dream state. So you can embody this frequency while you are awake, because understand, the dream you is actually more of you than what you 
typically experience while you're awake. Because when you are awake, you tend to put limitations on yourself. And the more limitations you put on yourself, typically, generally speaking, most of you cease to fully embody all of what you actually are because the limitations act as blinders. But when you are tapping into the version of yourself that you are when you are asleep, you're allowing for more of your infinite being to crystallize into the reality framework. We hope you have an initial teaching of waking up within the dream, understanding it can serve you at any and all moments, and it can allow for your wildest dreams to finally come true. Thank you so much for your time and attention. We now open ourselves up to you to be of service through dialogue in whatever way, shape, or form you all collectively and individually see fit. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I would like to ask, uh, um, how, can you see somehow uh, the potential or the future of this, what we are doing right here now? Yes. We see multiple potentials, and it's dependent, of course, upon how much each of you individually decide to continue to act on your passion. Because understand, it is your passion that has actually unified each of you. That is the force that has synchronistically brought all of you together. And it is that force that will allow for this to deepen. There is a high probability it will deepen because each of you have a strong connection with the Sasani people as well as other guides whom you have channeled. And the idea is because you are each well-versed in this practice, you, through collaboration with one another, will be able to deepen all of your collective channeling abilities. So what you are doing right here is essentially a drop in a bucket of life-giving water that you will be sharing with many people should you all continue to act on it and should you all continue to choose it. Oh, that's great. <laughs> so, um, well, I thank you for, for uh, just uh, supporting us in, in your words. Um, and uh, I was feeling the dream around me uh, raising up, but somehow I'm, I'm, uh, I feel like uh, it's pulling me back into what I call normality. What, what would you say to this? I would say you are pulling you back. Remember, the reality does not pull you back because the reality comes from you. And understand, you are not alone in this respect. Many of you will raise density to a very extreme amount so you can understand the bigger picture of what is going on in your reality framework. But understand, because you do this, you begin to notice the aspects of yourself which are still rooted in lower densities. So what will end up happening is as you expand to a certain point in density and raise your vibration, the aspects of yourself that are still rooted in the lower densities become much more noticeable. You're able to see them much more clearly. So it appears you're getting pulled down when in reality you are noticing an aspect of yourself that you're actually pulling up. Does this make sense? Yes, yes, that makes sense. So you're not being pulled down. An aspect of you that is very high density is actually raising the density of the aspects of you that are still rooted in the lower density. So is there a way for me to unroot myself from the lower density? Of course, and the idea is to understand what the belief systems are that are creating the rooting in the first place. In addition to this, you will also find there are going to be certain themes that you will be going through that are related to the subjects that you experience as rooting you down. But remember, it is the definitions, the belief systems you're creating, you're projecting, that create the experience of being rooted. But when you begin to embrace the natural energies that exist within the lower densities, Remembering the states of being you were in when you were in the higher densities will allow for you to be able to go through whatever process you must go through to navigate and discover the belief systems. And it will allow for you to do it in a way where it's going to have less resistance. 
So in other words, you're going to feel more supported as you navigate whatever processes you must navigate to begin to understand whatever it is you must understand to create the experience of no longer being rooted to that particular density. I see. All right, and we are now strengthening the connection. Understand there was a shifting within your own collective consciousness, the high frequencies that were collectively being downloaded upon each of you entering deeper into your own version of the dreaming state. So we do with all of you. Without further ado, how may we be of service to you? Shivai, well met. Shivai, and how are you today? Thank you. Most perfect. Um, as you are aware, many of us are also channels, including myself. Oh, yeah. And uh, I absolutely love you guys. And we have a supreme connection, just as you have with this conduit, so on and so forth. What I'm so curious about is why I seem to be stuck when channeling different entities, or stuck, let's say stuck, on a collective level, <clears throat> deliberately not identifying individually. And now I'm wondering uh, whether this is due to the density of the information of the beings. I know it's actually not really relevant, <clears throat> but it's just, I'm just very curious what could be the reasoning from your perspective as to why I feel a strong connection, but there is no name given, there is no specificity in that. You extent. are not alone. The channel who is bringing us through also experiences very similar themes. And the idea is some of these concepts you are diving into are not rooted within one individual of the society. They are shared concepts that are passed down through lineage and generations. So oftentimes when you are bringing these concepts through, you're actually bringing in the collective awareness of multiple beings who contain different pieces to the same puzzle. So that way you can get the bigger picture. When you see many of these channels that are bringing in specific beings, oftentimes they are sold contracted with that particular being, and oftentimes that particular being is conveying messages that it itself has embodied to such an extent that it in of itself is a container of this information across different spectrums of its existence. So in other words, there are some beings that have embodied the teaching so much themselves that they then are able to act as representatives of these concepts so they can become singular communicators of such ideas. However, that is just one way channeled information can then be expressed. For many of you, you will be able to channel the energies of entire collectives. And this has to do with a shift that is taking place within the consciousness of each of you individually on earth because understand when there's only a few people listening oftentimes there's only a few beings that are poking through from whatever extra dimensional society is attempting to be accessed but as more and more and more and more beings are then on your earth are then paying attention more and more and more and more beings from these societies can come through and the idea is channeling through a collective can also be symbolic of your collective consciousness beginning to resonate with that of the collective being channeled. Thank you very much um, for this answer. And the other question I would have is your perspective, as I do channel different entities or collectives, let's say, yes. about the interconnections between them and the layering within the channel. I'm channeling through my higher self um, yes. and feel almost as if like there is like a circuitry of which I would identify as specific collectives yes. which are primarily connecting me and then kind of relaying me to other information or perspectives. What Absolutely. would you say about this? We would say your assessment is accurate and the idea is that your higher self is working hand in hand with your soul to be able to identify other beings, other societies, other collectives that wish to work with you in a way that's reflective of your passion. And sometimes this is expressed as channeling, sometimes it's not, but when it is expressed as channeling, you are then able to glean the insights, glean the experiences from these other civilizations. And your higher self, you could look at as an agent. It is like a booking agent. 
It's saying, okay, well, we have this theme going on here. He's exploring this theme and passion. All right. Who is the best? best match. Oh, look, the Arcturians are a perfect match for this. Let's begin to patch them through. Let's send some synchronicities and some inspiration his way, and let's see if he acts on it. Oh, he did act on it. All right, Arcturians, he's raising his density. He's now becoming a match for you. All right, and look, a relationship is forming. And then as you begin to raise your density and strengthen the relationships with whatever collective your higher self has then exposed you to, Understand, these societies that are channeling to Earth, connecting to Earth, they are all interconnected. They are working as a team. They are working as a network. And they all essentially want to have their own family time with you. They all want to spend time with you. So they will spend a bit of time channeling with you primarily for a little bit. And then... They will say, all right, you have learned some powerful lessons. Now this other group wishes to come through. And oftentimes the ideas you learned from one collective will play off the ideas you then learn from another collective. And this is because of their connected network. And it is the synchronicity from your higher self that will show you these connections across these different civilizations. Thank you. Then I have one uh, final statement or question about the uh, let's say information accumulation process especially when conscious channeling is yeah. that i notice and also in regards to your introductory uh, statement about the dream yeah. that i notice i'm collecting information also in a conscious state which i then use in a channeling state however yeah. then the perspective is slightly shifted and kind of let's say quote unquote using the conscious information but shifting it in a way which is natural to me, but let's say slightly more extreme or slightly more clear. Yes. And yeah, well, if there's anything you would like to say about this, and aside from this, uh, thank you very much. Of course, yes. Understand that the teachings are multi-layered. You can apply them while conscious and you will get one layer. You you can apply them while channeling, you'll get another layer. You can apply them while you're actually dreaming, which you oftentimes do, and you get another layer. You can use them in spirit, and you get another layer. You can use them while traveling out of body, or while going on an internal vision quest, or while in an altered state of consciousness, and you will get another effect. And the idea is the same technique is not limited to one level a vibration, a frequency within reality. The reason the tool works is because it is universal. It means any being going through an experience that's relevant to you can apply the tool. That's how you know it's actually a tool because you're not the only one who can use it. And because it is universal in that sense, it means these tools that are being handed to you have also been time tested in other societies. So in other words, when you use a permission slip tool in your human incarnation, that same concept exists extra dimensionally or extraterrestrially, depending on which society or group of beings is using it. But when they use it, they will get a slightly different effect and how they can apply it will be expanded because their point of view is expanded. Thank you so much. Of course. We enjoy the structure you are building with your many tools. It is very fun to watch. Thank you. We're learning a lot from you. And, As we uh, are of you. So I would say right now, unless Christy has a Christy, do you have a question? Yes, please, if that's okay. Let me take a minute. All right. Yes. Take all the time you need. Um, I'm, I'm trying to move out of my analytical mind now as we speak. And uh, I'm actually um, trying to um, delete the fear that I'm creating within the moment before I actually start the practice. Um, and uh, that dream state is quite interesting and in how you explored and explained this. And then, um, I feel that will be very, very beneficial and helpful to myself, but um, I'm inclined to just panic when I'm put in this position um, and I'm trying to put together um, something in my mind actually before I start channeling as to my opening line. Yes. 
All right. Well, we would advise you the following. Remember, your fear is your friend. Yes. Remember, your physical mind, your analytical mind is your friend. Yes. Fear is the key. You oftentimes are explained in your society this idea of right versus left. The right brain versus the left brain. Yes? Yes. Sometimes many people in your society will generalize saying the left brain is analytical and it is oftentimes heavily affected by fear. The right brain is all about creativity and openness and it is ruled by unconditional love. Have you heard ideas of this nature? Yes. All right. Understand that that is a dualistic perspective, which is all well and good. But understand that this can be unified. When you unify within yourself these energies, you will be able to expand your point of view in such a way where the fear no longer is holding you back. You view it as a neutral thing. Because remember, the idea of the fear holding you back is a belief system you have about the fear and its power. Because it actually can't hold you back, you hold you back, but you can project that into the fear itself. So what we would advise is, again, understanding that you have the aspect of yourself that is experiencing and is creating fear. And you have a deeper aspect of yourself that is radiating unconditional love and joy. The idea is to unify these aspects of the self, and we will give you an exercise right now that you can begin to use to alleviate some of the symptomology of which you are experiencing and to actually allow for you to put yourself in a point of view where you can begin to break down whatever belief system constructs or allow, allow for the infinity sign to be horizontal. So the two ovals making up the sign are left and right, not up and down, left and right. Yes. All right. I want you to become aware of your left and right eye. All right? Yes. Now, I want you to envision this infinity sign surrounding the left and right eye the union of the two ovals being your third eye and your physical eyes are within the ovals of the infinity sign. Yes. Now what I would like for you to do is take your fingers making the peace sign, but bring the two fingers together, your index and middle finger. All of you can do this practice. This is not just a tool specific to you. Yes. You can all use this if you choose. The idea is to connect the tip of your finger to the center of this infinity symbol. Are you ready for the next step? Yes. Begin to, in space, take these two fingers, the index and middle finger, connected, and begin to draw the infinity sign in the air. And as you do this, Connect it to your awareness of the infinity sign surrounding the left and right eye. So you're actually drawing the infinity sign in space and create the feeling of it being drawn overlapping the left and right eye, almost as if you're drawing the sign on your face. Do you understand? Yes. yes. All right. Allow for yourself to do this for a moment. Feeling left and right eye encapsulated in the infinity. Yes. Now stop at the center point of the third eye once more. Yes. Take this infinity sign and breathe it into the brain. So now the left hemisphere is in the left aspect of the infinity sign and the right brain is in the right of the infinity sign. Yes. Allow for your pineal gland to be the center point. Yes. All right. Proceed again to draw the infinity sign in the air this time overlapping it with left and right brain, unified by the pineal gland. Yes. And allow for yourself to do this for a moment.
Allowing for your breathing to deepen. Stop at the center point of the pineal gland. Bring the infinity sign down now into the chest. Are you familiar with the thymus gland in your no. chest? Understand you have the chest bone, the sternum. Yes? yes. You're familiar with your chest bone? Yes. Directly behind the chest bone is what you understand to be your thymus gland. Yes. Allow for this to be the center point. Begin to draw the infinity sign, cutting it into the right lung, going back to the center point of the chest, into the left lung and heart, and begin to cycle this, right lung to left lung, unified at the center point of the chest. You feel this infinity sign unifying left lung, right lung, meeting right into the sternum as the center point. You can actually begin to quicken the speed if you find you're able to draw it fast. Yes. All right. And now what I'd like for you to do is we are going to do it in one other location. Allow for yourself to become aware of your lower back, your kidneys. Yes. Allow for the center point of the kidneys to be the center point of the infinity sign, right kidney in the right infinity oval, left kidney in the left infinity oval, and proceed again to draw here, overlapping left kidney, right kidney. What you are doing here is you are unifying major aspects of your own psyche and you are bringing them together and you are interweaving the energy of source into them utilizing the infinity symbol and you're actually just connecting them with the motion that's mechanically what's happening here this process this practice will allow for you to be able to integrate aspects of yourself that feel stuck this is for all of you including the channel this will allow for you to integrate that which feels stuck. And you can use this process, use this practice in whatever creative way, shape, or form your heart desires to allow for you to go deeper into yourselves and to understand the depth and the infinity of your very being. Yes. How are you feeling at this moment? Quite relaxed. There we go. Continue this process in whatever way, shape, or form you so desire, and you will find it is very versatile. Thank you. You are quite welcome. We would allow for any other questions that are present, if anyone would like to ask. However, if this is the end of the questions, we will allow for all other beings that wish to express themselves through these other very talented, very evolved, very loving, open-hearted beings that we are speaking with to then come forth. Thank you. You are welcome. Our pleasure. Thank, Thank you all you. for your attention, your time, and your fundamental existences. For every time we interact with all of you, we get to understand more of our role in the cosmos because we understand all of the variations that exist within our ancestry. And you are just many pieces to a puzzle that we are putting together that allows for us to understand more of the collective story and the variations of the collective story of our own history and lineage. Thank you all so much. Shiva.
Greetings, greetings. We are here. Thank you for allowing us to come forward at this time. We are really happy to participate in this, we would call Asasani channel panel. Well met, Shivai. Is there anything you'd like to share with us? Um, yes, well, we are aware of the conduct at this time and we can see, yes, uh, he is, he is, um, we won't say nervous. He just spoke there uh, regarding his fear of his approach to this channeling class. And we gave him this technique to use. So hopefully, Chris will be able to use this technique and this will allow him to settle into the energy uh, that we bring forward. We continue to work um, with Chris uh, just to support him um, with his abilities. He heard that we are around. Um, and he does allow for us to come forward when he is ready. He is quite busy at times, we are aware, but we do our best to move in when the time is right. This is a wonderful opportunity for us to, yes, allow Chris to come forward and to practice and allow for our energies to come forward. Why you chose Chris or what, why you, what is the connection you have with him or what is his connection with you at this point? Well, we've been around Chris for some time now and uh, we come to Chris in his meditations. He is aware of this and um, we are slowly um, bringing Chris to a point where he will be able to bring our energy through quite freely. We have been around Chris now for a number of years. Um, there is a few beings ready to connect to Chris. Um, there is Kin, there is Shabin, and there is Kwahiya, three beings that are working closely with Chris as we speak. Um, Kin would be the main being that is connecting with Chris at this time. He is a being that has been around Chris for most of his life. And he has just made Chris aware of this in the last few years. Chris has um, been able to um, see Ken in his meditations. Ken comes through in his meditations and shows Chris's face and then just leaves. So this is, this is what we have done to make Chris aware of what was happening. And this has been happening now to Chris for some time. We have been working with Chris, not just the SSN race, there has been other races working with Chris to make him aware um, and to allow um, for his abilities to to develop. There has been work um, and continue, uh, there has been work and there is continuous uh, work done on Chris. Um, um, but this to happen, um, Chris's channeling um, uh, points are opening, are opened in the front and uh, they are just um, uh, opened at the back, which will take maybe some more time. Chris is aware of this. Uh, so we just continue to uh, push Chris uh, to continue um, to practice and um, either practice on his own or practice uh, in this form. So yes, we are happy that he has brought himself forward at this time. When you interact with Chris in his dreams, do you have any messages for him that maybe he hasn't remembered, but you would like to reveal at this time? 
that may be relevant for him to hear or may be relevant for whoever is listening. Uh, much love and respect for all of you and your people. And Chris, thank you all. Yes, that is a wonderful question. We thank you for bringing this up at this time. Yes. Yes, we continue to connect with Chris in his dream states. And um, I think where the confusion can be with Chris at times is, is that he is trying to figure out, which he has discussed at the start there, he has asked the question where he can get, he can get lost, as he says, as regards to himself moving out of the way and completely letting go. And there, has, um, there is a few beings, as we speak, connecting, trying to connect with Chris um, and come through in this way. And Chris, Chris can, um, yes, he can struggle at times trying to um, figure out actually who the energy is coming through. But we continue to mind, Chris, that this doesn't really matter because we are a collective. And uh, that is something that we can work on at a later date. And um, we continue to, yes, download this to Chris in his dream state. Just to reassure him that there's no need to actually stay focused on one particular energy. It is okay for you just to go into the channel state and just allow the collective to come forward. And as you continue to practice this, you will find over time that yes, you will get a sense of a particular energy and you will be able to bring that energy forward through it. So we would like to remind Chris of this at this time. There is no need really to focus on one energy. We hope this has answered your question. When the Sisani look at humanity, when, uh, when you look at all of us here, and you look at all of our different versions that exist, right? You look at all of the different parallel Earths. Um, I'm aware you speak to a lot of them, but what dictates the ones that you speak to? What, what draws you to one parallel version of Earth over another? Why has, why has our reality been chosen and the, the other parallel realities that are similar to this one? What is it that has brought, you know, uh, this connection uh, to, to come forward? I understand, you know, we as humanity have asked for it, but why, you know, what, I, yeah, just. Yes, another interesting question, Tyler, yes. Um, we see, yes, yeah, you ask, but there is only a majority of you that ask these questions. Um, we see that the collective on earth um, at this time, the majority is still asleep. Um, that's what attracts that's what attracts us is this sleep state we see the energy on earth as we speak is quite is quite dense in many ways so these are areas that we work in and we focus on yes a particular area that will allow us to work with and we send as much energy as we can to this point hoping that the masses will get a chance to, as we say, wake up. But it's a slow process. And as you described your question, um, Tyler, you can see that yourself. How you described your question, you could see that, yes, there is, there is only a few, as we speak, that are prepared to accept really who we are. And that all, that all goes back to really themselves. And unfortunately, they are struggling with their own identity. And this plays, this plays difficulty in their own awakening. So yes, we sit back and we observe. And yes, we focus in on the parts of your reality that we feel is needed. And we notice that sleep state is, is very, very much here as we speak. And there is only a small proportion of humans awake and ready to come forward and tap into really their true abilities.
I hope I have answered your question, Tyler. Yes, you have, and thank you. Okay. Well, we feel now that this has been a wonderful experience for us, and it's also been a wonderful experience for Chris. This has allowed him again to demonstrate his abilities. And we hope that, yes, he puts himself in this position again. This will allow us to come, this will allow us to come true. And it will allow Chris to gain the confidence and prove to himself that, yes, this can happen. So we will step back now. And we thank you for allowing us to come through. Thank you. Thank you, Chris, and thank you, Sasani. You're welcome. We speak <clears throat> as the mass consciousness of the Sasani consensus, if you will. <clears throat> we are joining you within the synchronicity, within the eternity of your presence in this way, conjoining with you, co-creating with you, conjuring up with you this new type of imagination as you allow to see yourself in a new light. Allow yourself to see yourself in this way with, if you will, newfound abilities newfound perspectives about yourself which of course as you are understanding and as you have just shared about the dream state learning that you truly are always much grander than you may believe yourself to be in any given now for you understand that most naturally your human mind is limited in this way is constructed in this way to allow you to have a physicalized experience to allow you to have what you may deem in some way still and if you will old type of human life. Many of these conditionings, even many of the fears you have experienced and are experiencing, are actually quite necessary for the infinity of creation to truly experience itself through all the possible perspectives that could possibly be experienced. So in this way, we would like to thank you for your boldness, for your curiosity, and for your willingness to experiment within yourself. For as you may have come to understand as well, none of you are forced to incarnate upon this planet. None of the limitation that you experience even now is forced upon you. It is all chosen, at least if you will, on some level consciously. And certainly from our perspective, it is a most conscious choice that any and all of you have made on an, if you will, soul level. So we would thus then simply encourage you to further along your own path of self-exploration and self-understanding with all the tools and all the processes, and also with all the joy that we and all the other entities that you are connecting with may possibly relate to you. So within this way, we would like to send you our unconditional love at this point and ask for any ideas, any statements, or any questions that you may have in this now. <clears throat> well, thank you. Uh, I will let Christy, if, if you want to ask something. Come on. Hello.
Hello. Well met. <clears throat> Please proceed. Uh, nice, nice, nice. Thank you for coming through at this time. And we thank you for coming through. Yes, um, I was uh, just practicing my uh, channeling there uh, before this uh, content came uh, through. Um, with your energy. Um, can I ask you please, um, did I allow your energies to come through when I practiced or was I struggling? <clears throat> well, we would sense that, of course, you yourself, <laughs> potentially much more than we could possibly ever be, may be the judge of that situation. And also within this idea, of course, understand that from our perspective, the best way that you could see yourself and could see this experience you not, may now call a parallel ideal past of yourself and simply see it from a neutral perspective, see it without any judgment. Simply, if you will feel into that state once again, also when if you will rewinding the recording and simply be truly conscious of your own emotions, of your own fears, your own potential insecurities coming up. And that is if you will, the menu that we have delivered to you in each and every case, no matter how you may does then proceed to quote unquote judge the information which we shall truly solely leave up to you. We would like to remind you that we have certainly transmitted all that was necessary <clears throat> to transmit in this way and that you have, if you will, in this way, truly served yourself and served all of those who were in that sense privileged to listen in to the communication you have allowed to come through in collaboration with us, if that is an energy that is sufficient. <clears throat> thank you so much. That has made me no, feel a lot better. <clears throat> once, I get, once I get a small insight that I'm making progress, I think it will just allow me to excel. <clears throat> well, understand, as always, kindly remind yourself of this idea that all validation is self-validation. All judgment is self-judgment. So even though we are most gladly relaying this information to you and this, if you will, reinforcement through the conduit, we would like to remind you that this is an energy that can always only be experienced by you because you are, as you quite well understand, on the frequency to receive that energy. And you may use a mirror such as us for this, if you will, idea of a permission slip it understand it is simply a feeling, it is simply an awareness, an understanding within yourself that you may access in each and every now because you are connected with it most intimately. That joy, that love, and that, if you will, <clears throat> nonchalance of understanding that everything you do is perfect as it is. So we would just invite you to, if you will, remain within that state more and more, ease into that state in each and every now. Thank you. And we thank you. <coughs> so beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> so there's, there's no need for me to question the outcome. <clears throat> well, understand that <clears throat> everything within your own life is perfectly divinely orchestrated. So we would suggest that you merely focus on the energy, on the feeling within the moment, and trust that even any apparent idea of barrier or conflict or fear that comes up is simply as everything within your own life, a part of the process and a part of, if you will, even the game that you have chosen to experience and that you have chosen to play. <clears throat> okay. Um, I've been told uh, um, by, um, I've been told by a, a recent channel that I had a session with that um, there's actually information being downloaded into my subconscious because sometimes I, I actually question the information that I'm bringing forward. Is it relevant? Is it necessary? Is it needed? Does it make sense? <coughs> blah, 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 blah. Yes. What is your question in this regard? Um, I am just, um, I'm just trying to gauge and um, make sure that, uh, that um, I have something to speak about. <coughs> Well, you already contain the obvious answer, which would be that if it is something that in that sense excites you enough to express it, then certainly it is relevant for you 
and also for other entities for whomever may hear it. <clears throat> Can you follow? Um, yes. <clears throat> of course you can at any given moment, even within the channeling state, cut yourself off and that sense judge the information in ways of, for example, oh, I've heard this before, or oh, this is only coming from here and there, or oh, this is an experience, or oh, well, however strange the information comes through, it is not the correct grammar, it is not the right vocabulary, it is not the concept I initially wanted to channel about. If you allow yourself to leave aside any and all of these ideas of the limitation of the channeling process, then most naturally you can understand and you will experience that the information may flow much more easily, much more effortlessly. And as you've already yourself experienced, it uses a quite different logic from, if you will, the more conditioned idea of a linear human mind. It uses the concept of circular logic and circular reasoning. Well, not reasoning in that sense, but if you will, circular <clears throat> structuring in this way. So you may thus then feel that while you may wish for a certain outcome in a linear way, the channeling state contains much more potentially relevant information and ideas, which eventually, if you will, you will also always find, if you allow yourself to see the complete picture, actually make perfect sense and may actually be much more of what you actually required, no matter how you may judge it from, if you will, a more conditioned and linear perspective. Can you understand this idea we are relaying? <clears throat> just about, just about. Um, it's, it's just again, um, I'm just trying to um, eliminate the fear that I can, um, I can bring um, within myself um, as I take uh, my approach to practice channeling um, and again my my analytical <coughs> mind sometimes kicks in and questions really my plan where's it going from here christy uh, how are you going to take off how are you going to finish and, uh, i have all these questions sometimes running around in my head and sometimes i try to quieten my mind um, and sometimes i get there okay but i feel quite relaxed uh, tonight within this group uh, and uh, but there's other times now where I can I can, I can develop a challenge or in myself like uh, just around the whole approach. Well, I would suggest that the entirety of the lives you have set up for yourself is purely, if you will, for the fun and excitement of the challenge that it contains. So you could also see this in that particular light, see it as, as we have shared, more a fun challenge, if you will, than anything that could be seen as problematic in any way, shape, or form. At the same time, we would encourage you, if you will, to develop any idea of a meditation, of a relaxation, of any sort of permission slip, and even if you would phrasing, <clears throat> even if you will somewhat formulaic introduction of your channeling, if it assists you to ease yourself into that state, because then upon, if you will, repetitive acting on that particular permission slip in conjunction with the channeling, you will find that this permission slip does then will more and more naturally shift you into that state. So you will does, not, does then not feel so much that you would need to push yourself into the state, but will much more, if you will, naturally flow into it through that permission slip that you have built for yourself, which can be any type of meditation, visualization, relaxation, breathing, or even any other exercise that you can also channel within your imagination and trust again that whatever idea comes up for this type of permission slip, if you would choose to use it, is the perfect idea, is the perfect building block in your own individual process. <clears throat> Great. <clears throat> Great. Um, just one quick question. Are, are you aware of the beings that are connecting to me at the moment, Shabin and Kin? <clears throat> Well, we are aware, let us say, to the extent that you are aware. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. We thank you. Thank you so much. Namaste. I will step back now. I would like to ask a question related to the idea of... Uh, <clears throat> Okay, this is a personal question uh, for myself and my own process um, because it is a cyclical theme in nature and I 
have a hunch you'll be able to assist me. Um, so I have uh, struggled with a long time with uh, addictive uh, expressions of energy. So, you know, indulging in different substances compulsively, different activities, foods, things like this compulsively. Um, oftentimes I'll engage in uh, these types of behaviors, even when it doesn't necessarily feel like I'm avoiding something. <clears throat> Sometimes it will feel like I'm just gravitating to this. And um, I'm at the point, you know, of having spent years in this type of uh, lesson where I, I no longer wish to engage. And you know, as the, the feelings that seem to pull me in those directions emerge, um, I look at them now and I'm saying, like, I don't want to, you know, go there. I don't want to do uh, these things. And for a while, you know, um, I can override them and I can go long expanses of time uh, without, you know, re-engaging the behaviors. However, um, there will be those moments where I like go back into it and I, I transform a lot. Oftentimes it will teach me a lot and I'll learn a tremendous amount about my shadow, my own process. Um, but I, I want to know exactly why am I gravitating to these behaviors? Um, are there other ways to learn the lessons and um, any, any sort of insight you can provide in this way would be very <clears throat> appreciated. Well, of course, as always, the primary idea would be that no matter what state you find yourself in, not to judge that state, to understand that you have perfect motivation which led you to arrive at whatever particular idea, whatever particular experience or lesson you are experiencing. <clears throat> and therefore in this way, first of all, understand not to judge yourself for if that, if you will state that idea, that expression, that information truly is integrated within your own self in, if you will, a complete extent then we would suggest that you would not anymore gravitate towards those, but may also always assume that if you do gravitate, that you have your own very much specific reasonings. You may share, if you will, some part of your story, if you wish, we may investigate further. And at its very core, of course, these are primarily ideas associated with self-worth and self-love, as all other ideas are. <clears throat> Yet the, if you will, unique configuration of course, is something that is left up to you yourself to discover. <clears throat> Yet we invite you to share or discuss more about this idea if you wish. <clears throat> we would suggest that even if your, if you will, quote unquote, idea is to completely let go of whatever behavior you may describe, then the key, of course, always is in actuality the unconditional acceptance of that idea. For only then you're not creating this idea of resistance within yourself towards any energy, towards any idea. And only then, if you will, it can truly leave you reality. For otherwise, it would still contain some remnant of restriction of fear, which does then would continually be coming up to be knocking on your door. But by truly unconditionally accepting that idea, and we would suggest that this is an experience that you have had within your own life before, upon unconditionally accepting an idea, you may find it to transform most radically and most effectively. And aside from this, as you have truly answered your own question, the main determining factor, if you will, in relation to any forms of expression, for you can understand they are all fundamentally neutral, however strange this may seem from a human perspective, the only, if you will, <clears throat> gauge, the only true indication would be, as you have stated, your own emotional state, your own self-reflection and self-contemplation in relation to any idea, and whether you then in totality, if you will, and also in the moment, deem that it is something that is truly, if you will, the most exciting idea you could engage in within that now. And if it is not, then simply allow yourself any and all other options just as well. And simply by increasing the options you have, just as potentially with dietary changes, you may simply find upon an increase of options, gradually and gradually, some, if you will, older behaviors, some older options, naturally fall away, not because you deliberately try, if you will, to ignore them or to avoid them, but simply because gradually, over time, in a sense, you have accumulated so many more different options which seem so much more exciting that the quote-unquote old behavior will simply fall away. <clears throat> awesome. Thank you. So that was, that was excellent. Thank you so much. I really <clears throat> appreciate your, your experience and wisdom in, in, uh, in these regards. Thank you. Well, we thank you. And we thank you for allowing us to reflect the knowledge and the wisdom that each and every one of you 
already contain. <coughs> That's beautiful. <coughs> Thank you, assistant. <coughs> if we may assume there is nothing further that any of you would like to ask or state at this point. Well, uh, I have a question, and that is, uh, what uh, would you suggest suggest for us to, uh, if if we want to continue? And uh, it, it takes quite a lot of time for me to cut the videos uh, how I would love them to be. So perhaps uh, you you may have some quick advice uh, which will allow me to do it much easier. <laughs> well, while you may prefer us to answer, just send it over, we'll fix it for you. This is not what we will do. However, what we may suggest is to simply flow along your own path of least resistance in this way of understanding that in whatever format you are able within the time that it excites you to engage in the activity to quote unquote prepare and refine whatever product you are creating, that will be the perfect timing in divine right timing, allocated, and also, as you raise your own frequency, accelerated, if you will, in effectiveness. So thus then we would simply encourage you to, if you will, only engage in these activities within the allotted time and energy within which it truly excites you the most. And that, from our perspective, is always, if you will, all that is required. And not so to worry too much, if you will, about the potential responses or feedback that you may get, but simply remain within your own energy of excitement. And that is what will naturally resonate with all of those who are naturally gravitating to this idea of information. <coughs> oh, that's a perfect answer. <coughs> and we thank you. <coughs> <coughs> It was our pleasure to have you here. Well, then we thank you for, <clears throat> if you will, establishing further connections within yourselves, between yourselves rather, becoming aware of these connections, strengthening these connections, and truly, as we have shared in many ways, oftentimes with you, is that <clears throat> we are communicating primarily with you through the idea of imagination, the access, the key, to the entirety of your, your own reality, and also with what you are doing in this way, co-creating these ideas as you are doing right now. You are strengthening this imagination, also strengthening the idea of the probability, if you will, of a certain type of contact, in this sense, <clears throat> allowing our still parallel realities to come closer and closer in this way, to allow for more interaction through the imagination and any other ideas of communication within that theme, whether they be through sight, through sound, through thought, most certainly through emotion. And so does then we thank you for your willingness to be open to these ideas and also to the concepts and the energies shared by us and many other entities. And we just does then like to send our unconditional love to you. And we shall communicate again, always within the now. We thank you. <clears throat> thank you so much. Thank you.
Welcome. to the beginning of our shared dream together, our collectives had to find a way how to strengthen this connection. And it was appropriate, it was appropriate for our energy, energy to decline for a time so that you would miss us. And want us to come back and allow us to come back and allow us to come true in a stronger, more viable way for everyone. As you see, we do not expand by exclusion. As you see, the inclusion is the law, or let's say the principle of this universe principle of all that is, is inclusion, unconditional inclusion. And yes, you are exploring things where you struggle with doing what you do not think you should be doing. And that's mainly because you need to let go of the judgment. That's mainly because you do not want to eat the fruit of knowing the good and evil anymore. You want to eat from the tree of life and enjoyment. Not the shame. No shame at all. No guilt. And we are here to provide the atmosphere for you to feel comfortable, to express yourself as you are. Shivai, thank you so much for coming through. Um, Christy or Tyler, do you have something to say? Yes, I'd, uh, I'd like to ask a question, please. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for bringing your information forward and The word judgment is something that I play with a lot. And um, it's not only judgment of what's going on around me, it's judgment of what's going on inside of me. And this can have implications in other areas of my life. And something that I continue to work on. And that is judgment. It's something that I try to avoid. But it's, it can be difficult. Um, as you are aware, you see how we operate down here. And uh, sometimes I'm pulled into judgment. 
and I have difficulty leaving it until I get the answer I want. And the answer sometimes is, is wrong because it takes me to another judgment. The answer is never wrong. So we first would say to this, you don't need to judge the judgment. And that's how you start to let go of the judgment. So that means the judgment would be okay in case you allow yourself to judge. Do you understand this? Yes. And then you are open enough. The veil is lifted enough or you have allowed the veil to lift enough to see beyond the judgment. Because if you judge the judgment, you just see the judgment and you don't allow yourselves to experience the emotions that are connected to the judgment and to see the wider perspective. Is this understandable? Yes. Do you think you can use that? Yes, definitely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Tyler, you're up. I have a, a question. Um, and is relating to uh, beings which uh, you have genetic relationships to. Um, the, the greys in particular, I wish to inquire about. Um, I've gotten uh, multiple synchronicities today uh, indicating that it is uh, appropriate for me to channel them. Um, and I can feel a very interesting pull within me into that direction, almost as if there's something, uh, it almost feels like there's a, a primal need within me that it seems that energy is resonating with. Um, the primal need is not dark necessarily in nature, but there's a, a feeling of it that almost feels very animal-like. Um, that's the only way I can describe it. It feels like an aspect of animal consciousness that's being nourished by the feeling that I get when I imagine channeling these beings. And um, I was wondering if you could elaborate on, um, well, I'm sure they'll, they'll share some stuff and I don't want to have them, you know, have you given anything away that's, you know, meant to be revealed within the, the synchronicity of the moment? Um, but could you elaborate on this feeling and uh, the role that the Greys uh, currently play potentially with us individually and with us uh, collectively in this time? <clears throat> it would be appropriate for you at this time to not worry about what's going to come through and just open yourself up to whatever it may be and let us discuss the feeling that you are feeling would you feel comfortable um, labeling it as feeling of the hive rather than animal yeah hi hi would be a very interesting term to use almost like yeah i it's i, I think hi hi would be a very uh, very appropriate term to use now that i i investigate it more yes that that might help you to allow yourself to dive deeper into the collective consciousness of grace to allow the information that they would not be able to convey through another way. You need to stay in the hive awareness.
excuse us for delays that Franciszek is having another thought stream <laughs> meanwhile and that is disturbing the connection. Yes. It's perfectly fine, thank you. Allow us um, to disconnect at this time. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.